This is The Cube, live from the Moscone Center in San Francisco. This is SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of VMworld 2010. Now, inside The Cube. We're back at theCUBE, siliconangle.com's continuous coverage of VMworld Live 2010 in San Francisco, California at the Moscone South VMworld. 2010 is rocking, we're on the third day, really the second day of big announcements, and I'm always excited uh, because we've done three CUBE events, it's kind of a new product for us, but we've had some consistent guests, Pat Gelsinger from EMC, uh, Rich Napolitano, who's joining us right now, president of Unified Storage at EMC, He's a regular now, so we're yeah. expecting uh, to have you back. Great uh, to have you back every as time repeat we do the guests, cube, right? so. We've got a lot of people watching. We have up over 140,000 in the last two and a half days. Yeah. So yeah. No, so good audience, so uh, yeah. you know, you're a good draw, so keep, yeah. we, got, we need you to come back yeah, in. You guys are super. So uh, tell us, uh, you know, just give us a vibe from your perspective. EMC's been doing a lot of things, obviously with customers here, mm -hmm. and showing us some technology, obviously the relationship with VM, where everyone knows about. But just give some uh, color to the show here in San Francisco, and mm -hmm. we're on the scene, cloud revolutions going mainstream, Stream. We're covering it wall to wall here at SiliconANGLE, so give us your angle on that. No, great, and great to be here with you, uh, you guys today. And you know, uh, first of all, I'm looking out here at a beautiful, you know, 60 degree day in San Francisco, and there's not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> uh, but uh, here at here at uh, VMworld, it's a really exciting time. Technology, you know, customers, six, 17,000, I think it was uh, total. Huge numbers. Huge numbers. Fantastic uh, momentum you know, uh, on this transition to the virtualized world, to uh, enabling the cloud, just use enthusiasm for this. And it's pretty clear that we're still in the very early days of this massive technology transition. And, uh, you know, uh, there's tons of technology on the floor, a lot of enthusiasm around it, but at the end of the day, what we see here is, I think, a fundamental shift in our, in our business models and our technology to enable this next wave of, uh, you know, data center. And it's really all about taking out cost and complexity and enabling flexibility in the uh, IT infrastructure. Unified storage, give us a definition of that, because you know, unified has been kicked around, it's kind of a punchline, unified sure. communications, unified storage, but it's, but it's mm -hmm. you know, convergence had that same effect, now it's mm -hmm. real, but you know, it kind of has that you know, <coughs> trajectory of you know, hype build up. Talk about the reality of unified storage in context of the cloud real mm -hmm. quick. So, you know, one of the, uh, one of the byproducts of uh, cloud and virtualization is that you're bringing many, many different applications together on a common infrastructure. So really, I think it's all about what, what the applications are doing. So as you bring these many different types of applications onto a common infrastructure, frankly, either physical or virtual, but more and more, you know, 40, 50% of, uh, of server deployments now, I think we saw some data yesterday that half of the server deployments, more than half of the server deployments now are virtualized, which is a, a major tipping point. Uh, but as you consolidate these applications, what you find is that these applications are going to use storage in many different ways. Historically, you know, a database would be a block-oriented infrastructure. So you had the emergence of SANS and other block-oriented infrastructure. Then you had the growth of more and more unstructured file-oriented data, and you saw explosive and continued explosive growth on the file side. And now you see the emergence of really more programmatic interface, you know, RESTful and SOAP-oriented application interfaces. And so these trends, I think, are really, you know, with the consolidation of the apps, driving to uh, storage infrastructure that needs to be more diverse and flexible in how it provides service to these applications. So to me, unified means unification, right? You know, look up in the dictionary, right? And so you're bringing unifying these different access methods together on a common infrastructure to really enable the applications. You know, I, I want to talk a little bit about the transformation of your organization. Right? It's, it's pretty diverse, probably the most diverse within EMC, I think that's fair to say. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of different technologies, a file, block, different software technologies. Um, it's, it's not something that you, you've undertaken overnight. Can you talk a little bit about your portfolio, how you're bringing that together, mm -hmm. and what some of the drivers are? So, um, you know, you have to have a vision and a strategy, and, 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 you know, a vision and a strategy starts from some insight on where things are going, right? And we talked about virtualization and these applications coming together. And so, once you have a vision uh, and a strategy, I think you really need to organize around it. And so, you know, what we've been doing the last couple of years is really bringing these groups that have historically been very product-oriented more into a functional structure. So. Um, we announced the last couple days, and so you can see it on the floor here, um, Unisphere, which is you know, our, our common uh, management uh, 
element manager, we call it, for the mid-range products. And so we had a strategy, we had a vision that we had too many different ways of managing our infrastructure and we needed to bring them together. So that was our strategy and now we've organized in that way. So we've actually taken the management groups that were in these separate product lines and brought them together. When you think about our block, our Clarion product offering, and our Solara, our file offering, we've actually brought those groups together as well. And so you see us bringing these disparate technologies together, both from a strategic, from a code base, and now from a people perspective. And that allows us to really drive a common vision and strategy forward and have the strategy aligned to the organization so that we can execute. And EMC is all about execution and building great products. Yeah, what, what is the impetus behind that? Can you give us some insight there? Is it, is it customer demand? Is it, is it response to the success, for instance, of, of NetApp? Is it the technology is now you know, coming together? Talk a little bit about it, that. It's probably all those things, David. I mean, I think um, you know, one, of our, one of our biggest challenges, I think, is technology people, is that we're so focused on the technology and the features that we need to kind of bridge that gap. We need to be sure that our R&D investments are creating business value. You hear that a lot. Um, you know, we have, I have thousands and thousands of engineers in my organization. We can build a lot of technology. We can probably build more technology than people could possibly consume. And so our challenge is, how do we build the right technology that creates business value and deliver it to them in a way they can actually consume it? And so, we really need to think more strategically about the business problems and to really align our strategy and organizations to go do that. So, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, virtualization. Um, we, ESG just released a study, uh, I don't know if you saw it, uh, they shared some of the data with, with us um, uh, around uh, shares in virtualization. I was surprised, I had figured, okay, you're, you're number one in the mid-range, however you define that, whatever IDC price bands you use. Sure. I had assumed, okay, virtualization opens it up, you know, it opens the playing field mm -hmm. up. I was surprised to see that you guys were number one in virtualization. Right. Um, now, I don't know if the shares were the same or larger or smaller, but they were comparable. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that a little bit. I mean, why are you number one in virtualization from a market share standpoint? So, it's multiple things. I th you know, Joe Tutucci, the CEO of the company, is very, very focused. Obviously, he's chairman of both companies. And, you know, enabling this next generation data center, cloud infrastructure, is fundamental to the corporate strategy. And, and so, we drive very, very aggressively to support and actually accelerate the adoption of those technologies. So, you know, we announced here in the last couple days and demonstrated on the floor some 60s, 67, 68, integration points with VMware. It's ridiculous. It's, I mean, it's crazy. It's, <laughs> and we really want it to be seamless, so we want that experience to be seamless. The other thing is that, that's very, very important from a technology perspective, is to understand that historically, storage subsystem people have been very focused on you know, SANS or, you know, or SIFs or NFS, but, but in the virtualized world, the control functions, the not what we call the data path versus the control functions are more and more important. And so we have significant investments and significant focus um, in really enabling the services that VMware provides uh, with and, and using our products. Yeah, I have, I, I, I'd like to give you my opinion on this if I may. So, sure. you know, when we started this business, right, IBM was number one, right? right. They, they, right. Own, they dominate everything, they right. were the low risk bet. Right. I think EMC today and storage is the low risk bet, and, and, but there's more than that. You guys do a great job of of these, what you call proven solutions. Yes. And that takes a lot of risk away yes. From, yes. The, from the customers. The other difference I think is that, unlike the industry when IBM was there, right. it's way more competitive today. And yes. you guys are insanely competitive. Yes. Yes. So do you, I mean, do you buy that premise? No, I think, I think you're onto something really big there. I mean, um, the, the idea that people want to buy integrated solutions is why we, we partnered with VMware and Cisco around the VC Alliance. It's why we've created this joint venture uh, to really enable you know, a single face to the customer, uh, the Acadia investment with uh, Cisco and, and, uh, um, and EMC, to really create a, an integrated solution that people want to buy. I was just at lunch, sat down at a random table with some customers, and uh, the, the amount, of, amount of interest in VCE and, and our V-Block technology is, and so people want to buy that way. You know, there's just, again, so much complexity that by integrating our technology into solutions, which is why it's so important for us to have these, this control path, these native integrations into VMware, um, to make ourselves more and more application oriented in, in how we build Rich. and deliver products to market. Rich, um, a lot of conversation we've had with other experts has been about cloud forward, right? So, you know, everyone's buying clouds here. Um, it's about going forward and what's going to innovate going forward. You mentioned you can look at a lot of different technologies, but you, you have to figure out what to build. It's kind of right. an integrated, makes total sense, I buy that. Right. Question for you is, 
Obviously, M and A has been a huge activity. We're seeing all that stuff going on. New approaches, startups are coming out. So, R and D has been a big point. So, you 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 you, you run you run that organization. You're you get you're the captain at the wheel. What are you? How are you looking at that R and D? Because you have to be selective in how you're doing your R and D. You got acquisition strategies. What's your angle on that? In your opinion, and just kind of just a vision there. Just sure. Opinion. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's there's multiple things. There. I mean, you know, any big or engineering organization. Uh, actually can never do all the things they want to do. I mean, it's, it's kind of a dichotomy, right? So you have to have a set of priorities, right? And so what are our priorities? I mean, first and foremost, uh, first, second, third priority is quality. I mean, just how the world we live in, our stuff is expected to work at scale. You know, if you're going to work in the cloud, it has to work at scale. And it has to have five nines of more availability, it's serviceable, excuse me, supportable, et cetera. That's the first, second, and third priority, and we're known for that, and that's you know, a key part of our proposition. But in parallel to that, you need to simplify, you need to get more application oriented. And so, you know, those priorities trickle down into the organization. And, and you, you know, um, so you have kind of the core priorities. And then outside of the core priorities, you want to really bet in a few strategic areas, both organically and inorganically. And so you want to have your core strategy and you want to have some adjacencies because you, you never predict the future precisely. And you want to you push the envelope uh, on innovation and keep a kind of a healthy balance of kind of routine development, keep your quality up, build the next product, but create some groundbreaking capabilities. We just announced Fast Cash, which is a phenomenal capability. The only mid-range system, frankly, the only system in the world to have this capability is Clarion. And I got some email just the other day, yesterday, from a rep, uh, one of our big telco customers, came back and said they're seeing 4X the transactions per second in their billing system from a software upgrade to their existing Clarion. That's groundbreaking, revolutionary stuff. And then, then you got to think about inorganic stuff as well, right? So yeah, the world spins in any different direction. Exactly. You don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. So, you know, have a core strategy, look for adjacencies, you know, break some glass, do some things differently, organically as well as inorganically. Dave, what are you seeing in the Wikibon community from customers? You, you got 10,000 you know, practitioners in your organization um, on the Wiki. 15,000. 15,000 wow. in your organization. You're I mean, customers 15, are chiming in, you're kind growing, of a back channel. You're growing. So, you're growing. So, so what are they saying? I mean, they, they, you know, I'll see they you agreeing know, with the unified message. And you know, there's a huge simplicity theme. There's no doubt about it. Simplicity and efficiency are big, big overriding themes. But the, I have to say, the other thing we're seeing is there are a certain set of customers, and there are a lot of them, that aren't, don't want to sacrifice um, their mission critical operations for you know, the potential of, of unification, right? So they, a lot of customers, I don't know if you see this, Rich, mm -hmm. are fencing off their mm -hmm. block from their file and they're happy with that, at least for now. Sure. You know, they create a NAST here and they're saying, hey, you know what, it works fine. We're creating business value in other ways. There's another segment of customers that it's really just driven by cost cutting and efficiency and those are the guys that are really you know, clamoring for unification. How do you see it? I think you see both both camps. I think you see, um, you know, when you look at virtualization, uh, the idea that, um, you know, the idea that, if you think about VMDKs and virtualization, those are all file-oriented semantic, semantics. Yeah. So, you see, you know, performance-oriented, low-latency things around the block, and then you see more and more unstructured data, whether it be VMDKs or user data around the file. And so we, we see these infrastructures coming together really in both ways. And there's no question that the file is, you know, it's whosever numbers you look at, dramatically outgrowing the block, <laughs> and so you got to address that, right? So, can I just kind of change gears a little bit because we got Rich on, had some fun. So, so at EMC World, he gave some advice for people. So, so uh, there was a nice clip, and actually got a lot of traffic. So, uh, you know, <laughs> to the entrepreneurs out there. So, today, you know, what, um, you know, putting on the, you know, the the hat of experience, been there, done that, you run a big organization, huge entrepreneurial activity going on, and this is more of a VMware kind of story. I mean, mm -hmm. they're saying one dollar of license is fifteen dollars of, of ecosystem revenue, essentially the Microsoft model. Right. I mean it's gonna be a gravy train of innovation and, and money making, right. you know, companies right. getting public. Right. A lot of entrepreneurs out there spinning up apps, Apple's got the big announcement. What advice do you say now, you know, to add to that? To, how to approach their business, how to get funding, it's just yeah, just in, in advice. <laughs> Boy, what you that, tell them? That's an hour, at least a conversation. <laughs> um, so I would say that um, it, it, it's a Chinese curse, but you know we live in interesting times, right? And uh, but I think in in these interesting times, there's so much change 
in, in consumption models of technology around you know, enablements of things, you know, whether it be solid state, flash, or, or Intel's processors, or the speed of networks, and you know, so many new entrants in the marketplace. It's a very, very rich time. So I th I'd say my first point of advice is be bold, right? Be bold because it's really not clear what the outcome is going to be. Um, I would also say that um, you know, if you're you know, a growing entrepreneur, uh, you know, know, know what you're good at, right? I see a lot of my friends who want to start companies, they, they have kind of lots of ideas, but there's no unique insight because they're actually not expert enough to really have a unique insight. So I would say play to your strengths, not your weaknesses, right? If you're an ex expert in a particular technology, whether it be, you know, internet or service providers or chips or operating system software or applications, play to your strength and look for a unique, a unique idea where you have a unique insight that's really kind of beyond the horizon and don't be afraid to go after it because what do you have to lose? Awesome, so I had one last question for you. You run a big organization that's growing at the epicenter of technology. If three par is worth two billion, what's your organization worth? <laughs> <laughs> well, multiple revenue, a very, very big number. A very, very big number. <laughs> No Where comment he, there? I can't comment. Yeah. We, don't, we don't unbundle the, uh, the earnings or revenues uh, that way. Well, you startups but, out there, Rich DiPolitano's great advice there. EMC, uh, he's going to be buying companies uh, and uh, doing I didn't say that. I didn't say um, that. That's our prediction. Uh, our prediction. Uh -huh. uh, be bold and create new opportunities so the EMCs and the big guys can buy you, uh, I guess is, is my Do advice. Do something interesting. Um, they're always looking. some white space. Um, EMC, the leader, number one in storage virtualization um, and just kicking butt pulling the unified story together, VMware enabling all that through their relationship. So uh, we're excited to have you. We're here, SiliconANGLE, the Cube, coverage exclusively live from San Francisco, California at VMworld 2010. We'll be right back. Great. Thanks, Thank Rich. you, take care. Yeah.